Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick video about uh, a surface I'm working on today. This case came from a, a good old friend that we've been working with together for a really, really long time. Uh, this apparently is a non-functional uh, surface. Model 1769. We have our memory uh, right here. This is the SSD. We're going to be pulling it off directly and using an adapter such as this to communicate through PC3000 with the device. Now, uh, as you may know from my previous videos, Surface uh, laptops use BitLocker encryption by default. So chances are we're gonna need the key. In some very rare cases, I've been able to use Data Extractor and bypass BitLocker encryption with the master key. So uh, where do we begin? I think uh, the device is gonna be way too small for this board to grab it. Yeah, that won't clinch. Uh, maybe it will clinch in here. No, that's not wide enough. Okay, so what we can do instead is this. We can lock it on this side with one jig. So that it's nice and secure. Um, the mini jig is not as tall, unfortunately. Okay, whatever. I'm not gonna use a mini jig. All right, this is not ideal, but it will have to do. I don't have any other alternatives here. So I'm gonna power up all my devices. Let's get a focus on our chip. So I'm gonna add a little bit of flux here. The nozzle on the hot air station, I'm just completely getting rid of it. And first I'm going to be warming up the neighboring spot. The board is really thick. I want to make sure that it gets nice and warm before I try to pull the uh, memory off of its actual location. Ideally, you would want to use uh, like a preheater for a job like this, but there's no way I can fit one in here. So the logo that's coming up on the boot is the, you know, four squares for windows. And then it just cycles. So Often enough, it could mean that there is some sort of a problem with the, with the device itself. But in my statistical analysis, more times than not, it means that SSD is bad. Okay, so our memory had separated from the RAM. 
that's uh that's pretty bad guys process on soldering them back together is a pain in the ass and so the actual board up here doesn't look too bad but i'm not too concerned about this part i'm more concerned about this part So not too long ago, I bought, I was actually running some uh, experiments for another um, laptop that is exactly the same as this one. And I had exact same thing happening there uh, as far as the symptoms go. Um, but unfortunately in their case, uh, we could not solve the problem. The problem just kept on reoccurring the same way. I thought that maybe this was a controller somehow, but it's really, really thin, and it turns out that this is uh, DRAM. RAM, if it's problematic, uh, can be replaced. I have confirmed that it, these bottom chips, they're swappable, they're not tied to uh, the top piece, but the top piece obviously is unique. Now, uh, Dolphin sells these adapters. They're not cheap, uh, and the shipping isn't cheap. I'm not, I'm not going to be repacking this bottom piece with extra uh, solder. I'm going to clean up the top and just reball it so that it's nice and leveled. Hopefully, you know, like the way it is right now, it would have been totally fine by me if it wasn't for if it wasn't for this part. Maybe we can just use solder balls wouldn't that be nice so I dropped a few solder balls up here they're three millimeter we're definitely going to need flux here we will need the nozzle this time airflow down to like I'll set it to like 15 maybe the temp 270. Okay, I can, I think that I can make that work. Let's try our best here. Okay, I'm just gonna do one of them at a, one of them at a time. Yeah, this looks pretty good, guys. This is totally possible. Maybe I will do one more. It seems to be too big.
and one got in here. These two are a little tiny, right there. Okay, let's do a control check. Okay, it looks pretty good to me. Um, I need to clean the bottom side of it so that it's nice and flat. With um, looking at how much darkened spots we have at the bottom of this chip, I feel like we may have a problem with the SSD itself. But again, you know, it's just a speculation for now. I can be certain. By the way, guys, I'm testing out a new chip that came with one of our uh, spare uh, irons it's a blade type of chip and this is not JBC seems to be doing this job just fine And this is used with a uh, 245 handle. This is the kind of situation that is unfortunate that it happened because uh, if we don't get it running right now, that means, uh, that could mean more than one thing. It could be uh, obviously the problem with the SSD itself, but it could also be uh, lack of connection with the effort that I've put in. So I'm hoping it's not going to be that and the connection 
that what I, I've established here is good enough uh, for the device to operate. I have to put this in, lock it, and plug it in. So, uh, detect. Fail to detect. That's bad. If it's failing to detect, that means it cannot see what type of device is plugged in. With that being said though, I'm a little bit of an idiot here. I'm using SK Hynix adapter. So that is actually the reason, <laughs> definitely contributing to the fact that it's not gonna ID and get recognized. I'm gonna use a regular adapter for non Hynix chips. Let's plug this one in and run the same command, detect. It detects that it's an NVMe. Looking at the startup screen, 530 milliamps is what we should be getting. Launching the utility, we get the ID, so that means the reball was fine. Let's put it to the main test, and that's reading. And we have access to reading. So at this point, what we would need to do is create a, a task and start imaging the device out. So we make an image into a virtual disk. Uh, let's see. So I requested the key already. And if we're going to get prompted for it, I'm going to need to wait until I get it. But here is our partition table. Hey, there is no encryption on this device. That's a first. <laughs> Definitely uh, the first. So there is an NTFS partition. Um, we have access to this bad boy. You can see sectors are turning green. I'm gonna go map. Um, let's go and get MFT map first. Let's scan select the chains. Capture all of that. And the MFT is captured. So now what we have um, in this utility is a map of all of the files and their locations. So instead of um, wondering where the data is and cloning the whole 500 gigabytes, we can just go through data analysis and scan MFT. This will create a virtual sort of uh, like, a, like a mirror partition, which we can reference to and uh, map out files right from it. My assumption is that this procedure is gonna go smooth. Potentially, if the board was repaired, this data could be accessed directly through uh, the means of the computer itself. But this is the easiest and the fastest way for me. And as you guys can see, within half an hour, we have full access to the data without any interruptions, even with a little mess up with the chip that accidentally occurred. No big deal, the data should be safe. And if you guys need this uh, done, the link is in the description. Thank you. Comment below if you have any questions or if you just wanna say hello, it definitely helps the algorithm to boost this video and uh, make it available to more people who could also be interested in data recovery. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode.